sing fela bonang miriti ise ina mile au filita tili se lia di kela le du le sing fela le tati lo te le fa
shown us. We have gone through a lot of victories. Some of us are at school. We have passed our pre preliminary exams. And because of that, we need to thank God. As we go to school, there is a threat of us attracting COVID. But God has saved us from COVID. That is a victory. We need to bring an offering, a thanksgiving offering to God for that. Some of us have escaped other diseases, and we need to thank God for that. Some of us have gone without being robbed the whole week, and we need to thank God for that. Some of us have as friends who are always threatening to beat us, schoolmates who do not love us but they've saved us from being abused by them. We need to thank God for that. We need to come to him with offerings. The lesson we learn from Noah's act is that after every victory and after every deliverance, we need to bring something to God and thank God for it. And so today I'm encouraging pathfinders that every week when you come to church, after being delivered, the entire week, after you have had your victories in the week, and as you come counting yourself amongst the living, you must always rejoice to be counted among the living and thank God for that by bringing an offering to him, a meaningful offering that is worth the praise to God for whatever he will have done for us in the week. Thank you so much. May God bless you as you give your offerings for this week, as you return your tithes for this week. May the Lord bless you. Amen. The saints are greeted in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, happy Sabbath to everyone and let us open with a word of prayer. Our Father and our God who art in heaven, dear Lord, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your grace. At this point in time, we're about to indulge in your word. Father, pray in us that your Holy Spirit lead, guide. Father God, open the eyes, mind, hearts and ears of your children so that they may accept your word. Father God, use me in a very special way. I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. We are going to read from the book of 2 Kings chapter 6. 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 1 to 7. One day, a group of prophets came to Elisha and told him, As you can see, this place where we meet with you is too small. Let us go down to the Jordan River, where there are plenty of logs. There we can build a new place for us to meet. All right, he told them, go ahead. Please come with us. Some suggested, I will, he said. So he went with them. When they arrived at the Jordan, he be, they began cutting down trees. But one, as, but as one of them was cutting a tree, his axe head fell into the river. Oh, sir, he cried. It was borrowed. Where did it fall? The man of God asked. When he showed them, when he showed him the place, Elisha cut a stick, threw it into the water at the spot. Then the axe head floated to the surface. Grab it, Elisha said. And the man reached out his hand and grabbed it. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. Uh, our sermon title is Game Changer. Game Changer. So now we're only going to look at three points. A conduciveness invitation and redeeming conduciveness invitation redeeming now a story is told in zimbabwe that there were men who were grouped together by a government official so what these men would do is that they would steal gold for a living these were poor men who could do anything to get money so they were grouped together by this government official. So they would go to mines, steal gold. 
On this particular day, they went to go and steal. Now, there was this other gentleman who was at the gate to see where the security are or where the police or to alert his friends that somebody is coming. Now, on this particular day, this man was at his post, but his friends were taking long to come out. So he told himself, let me go and see what this men are doing. Why are they taking long? So he went. And when he got there, he saw that his friends are really struggling to dig out gold or to steal gold. Then he waited there a minute, then he went back to his post. By the time he went back to his post, from afar, he saw a security coming with police. So he runs quickly back and tells his friends, hey, the police are coming. So his friends gather whatever that they gather, they escape. But as they escape, one of them was too slow. Now he's stuck there in the hole and the police are now there where he is. So it is said that he looked around, tried to do whatever that he can, looked to the sides, looked before him, looked behind him, looked underneath him. But there was no escape route for him to escape, but only a sewage pipe. Now the police says to this young man, hand yourself in because there's nowhere you will escape. Now this young man tells himself that he will not be caught by police. He goes to the sewage pipe, gets into the sewage pipe and the sewage and goes with the sewage. Now the police are left with each other, arguing among the, amongst themselves. The other says, go down the switch, fetch this, that young man. Then this one responds, this one responds, I will not dead myself. Imagine how I will smell. I am a family man. Imagine how I will smell. Let us leave this young man. But here's the moral of the story. Jesus is a game changer. He left heaven, came down into the sewishness of our lives, redeemed us, died on the cross so that you and I might have eternal life. Jesus is a game changer. He is a redeemer who will redeem us from ourselves. And we hear of one game changer in chapter 6 of Kings. By the name Elisha. Elisha, scholars write about him, says that he was like a magnet that drew people closer to him. Elisha was a conducive leader who made environments conducive. One scholar says that when a child would scream, Elisha, Elisha, parents would come out of their houses to go and listen to Elisha or to see what Elisha is going to do. Even Jesus was a conducive leader. Not only did the sick and the dying follow Jesus, but those who were well also followed Jesus because Jesus made the environment conducive. They who were well felt accepted in the eyes of Jesus. They felt the love. One writer by the name Vena Pumzile, Pumzile Vena, writes in his book of leadership, he says that when a leader makes an environment conducive, when I prepare for work, because work is conducive, when I'm preparing for work, I will sing songs because I cannot wait to get to the place where I work. So I'm here to submit that. Let us make environments conducive. We are pathfinders today, leaders tomorrow. As a pathfinder, learn to make environments conducive. Be it your friends, be it at school, be it at church, wherever you are, make the places conducive.
conducive. You know, when church is conducive, when Sabbath ends today, I already look forward to the next Sabbath. I wish that the week would end quickly so that Sabbath might come. And on the day of Sabbath, as I am preparing for Sabbath, I will sing songs of joy because where I am going, the environment is conducive. And nowadays, our church buildings are big, but the church members are few. When church members need to be more, they are becoming lesser because our places of worship are no longer conducive. Let us make environments conducive. Let us be game changers. Elisha was a conducive leader. Now the place where they are is too small for them to worship in. It is too small for them. And one of the prophet comes whom was taught by Elisha, comes to Elisha and says that the place where we meet is too small for us. Let us go to the Jordan and cut down trees. Now we have this leader who is a game changer, who sees the problem at the place where they meet. We can call it the place of worship. He sees the problem at the place of worship and sees the need to come up with a solution. Let us not only be pathfinders who complain, but let us be pathfinders who come up with solutions. When you see that there is a problem, don't only complain, but come up with a solution to the problem. And this young man has come up with a solution. And he says, let us go to the Jordan to cut down trees. Now here we are coming to our third, to our second point, which is invitation. Now this young man has suggested this to Elisha. Elisha has given approval over it. But this young man goes further and says to Elisha, come with us, come with us to the Jordan. Now the name Elisha means God is salvation. Salvation was brought to these men by Elisha. So they are inviting Elisha to go with them to the Jordan. Now when you wake up, in the morning, invite God. When you sleep at night, thank God that he was with you throughout the day. Invite him again as you sleep so that he sustains you throughout the night. You know, without the presence of God, this other day, the, the, the other day I was speaking to people, telling them that a car without an engine it might be beautiful, but it becomes useless because it will, it, it, it will be useless because it has no engine. A human body dressed beautifully has a, a, has a heart that pumps properly without a brain. That human body is useless. And we were told... A few weeks ago, there was this man who was in a coma for 37 years. 37 years. He died a few weeks ago. For 37 years, this man has been in a coma. He's a man, he's a man from France. He's been in a coma for 37 years. It is said that his heart was pumping properly, but his brains were not functioning. So people were hoping that this man would wake up. But unfortunately, he died. So, when you do not have God in your life, you are like a car without an engine. You are like a human body without a brain.
reign. In fact, somebody who is alive but has no brain is dead alive. So invite God in your day-to-day -day life. These men are going to the Jordan and they invite the prophet of God to go with them. Now the Bible says that they started cutting down trees. They started cutting down trees. And as they are cutting down trees, one of them cries, Alas! Master! It was borrowed. The axe was borrowed. The axe head falls into the water. And now it doesn't fall into any river. Now, I call this the river of God. We have the mountain of God. I call this the river of God. Because you'd notice that this is the same river where the Israelites went through. When Joshua uh, uh, was leading the Israelites, they passed through. It divided into two and they went through the river. This is the same river that kneeled, that healed Naaman. And it is the same river where Jesus is to be baptized in the New Testament. So this is a river of God. It obeys God. So now as the exit falls into the water, he says to Elisha, Master, it was borrowed. Now I'm here to submit. Be careful how you live your life. For you are just a steward over what God has given you. You are living on borrowed time. God has borrowed you the life. Be careful with what, how you live your life. Be careful how you, you, you use this temple of God. For it is borrowed to you. And this man, if he had to take whatever that is left of the ex to back to its owner, he was going to face the consequences because the owner did not give him the ex half without a head. Be careful how you live your life. Now note this, the blessing of God had turned into a problem. God blesses Elisha with a double portion of Elijah. Now wherever Elisha comes, people want to associate themselves with him. The place there at the Jordan becomes too small, but there is a solution to it. Now, when they get to the Jordan, the blessing of God has brought them to where they are. And there is another problem. Now, when God blesses you, note that there will be a problem. But already there is a solution to the problem. So when God blesses you, he wants you to grow. He expands you. He wants to fill your circumference. No, there is a problem. The egg's head that was borrowed fell into the water. Now, the Bible says that Elijah cuts a stick, throws it into the water. Now, Elisha takes that which is scientifically wrong, according to science, for an X head to float on water. You have to tighten or to fasten the X head to a wooden plank or to a wood. But Elisha takes that which is scientifically wrong according to human perspective and makes it scientifically right because he only cuts a stick, throws it into the water and the ex head floats. Now for I know my redeemer. Now we are at the third point. For I know my redeemer lives and he will stand at the end of time. Now this stick Elisha takes that which is scientifically wrong, that which is wrong to human beings, God can make it right. That, is, that which is wrong with you, that we see as wrong, 
that which is wrong with me, that you see is wrong with me, God can turn it into something that, it, that which is right. He cuts a stick, throws it into the water. Now I'm reminded that we sinned from a tree. In fact, there's a song that says, I must tell Jesus all of my trials. He's a kind and compassionate friend. If I tell him, he will kindly help me. Tell Jesus your troubles. This man says to the master, Alas, master, it was borrowed. Where did it fall? He showed him. It floated. Now, we sinned from a tree. The same tree is to solve our problems. We sinned from a tree. And Jesus comes to save humanity with a tree. When he hung upon the cross. I'm here to say, for I know my Redeemer lives. In fact, when you read it from the Hebrew, it says, for I know my good Redeemer lives. Now, how does one? Become a good redeemer. When I owe you money, when I owe you money, then you come to where I stay. Maybe you take certain things or you take the car or you take whatever that maybe you think your money is worth that you take it. So I need to become a good redeemer by paying back that which I owe you so that I can redeem back that which belongs to me. So when I redeem that which belongs to me, it makes me a good redeemer. So Christ is a good redeemer that we send on a tree and our sins are redeemed by Christ when he dies for us on the cross. We have a good redeemer who is willing to redeem us from our sins. In fact, he has already died for us. He has already redeemed us. It is for us to fix our eyes upon him. For in Christ, we have a game changer who changes environments. For in Elisha, we have a game changer. So for us who are pathfinders, who are leaders in the church, let us be game changers. Let us make environments conducive for people. Let us invite God in our day today life and let us remember we have a redeemer who is Jesus Christ for I know my redeemer lives not only that I know that Christ is a game changer so as pathfinders today and leaders tomorrow let us be game changers let us change environments where we find Ourself in. It is my humble prayer in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.